message to the miners, go back to work, I won't give in. But Scargill says, we fight on. The last thing on Julia South Wales will receive 30 million pounds between the 28th and the New birth of leadership in Britain. That is the most important. More than half of Britain's 180,000 miners have now stopped work because of the National Union of Mine Workers' strike against... The award-winning photographer Roger Tiley was 24 years old when the South Wales miners walked out on strike in 1984. His photographs were published around the world and became some of the defining... But witnessing it close-up was Roger Tiley, then a young press photographer whose subjects emerged from the pits to take on the state. He documented the violence, the hatred towards the strike breakers, the poverty of those who went for months unpaid, as well as the deep social alliances which saw the South Wales miners lead the strongest strike of them all. March 1984. The mines and communities across South Wales were about to be transformed forever. The year-long strike that followed was bitter and brutal. A young photographer from the Gwent Valleys captured every angle of the dispute, not from afar, but up close and personal. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. This is a story that's very personal to me. I was born and brought up in the South Wales Valleys. Coal mining was a way of life to many, but I could never have imagined what I was about to witness during the next 12 months. In 1984, the South Wales miners joined a national strike in support of the National Union of Mine Workers fight against pit closures. Nobody anticipated that the strike would last 12 long months and many of the South Wales miners called for a ballot. The vote never materialised and a small minority of Welsh miners eventually decided to return to work, being branded as scabs. To this day, scabs are blacklisted, with their former workmates refusing to speak to them. In communities that are warm and friendly, a scab will never be forgotten and remembered only as a traitor. As a young freelance newspaper photographer, I photographed the men and their families in due of this struggle to save their pits and indeed their communities. I have fond memories of the time and was always made welcome by the striking miners and their families. They were facing a struggle which was monumental and one that I had read about regarding their predecessors. It was like delving back in time as the miners fought for their existence and I recorded the battles on the picket line, the care at the soup kitchens and the dedication and support to the miners' cause far away from the South Wales coalfield. I remember being punched in the face one day by a young policeman on duty at one of the picket lines. 
He, like many, was drafted into South Wales from the London Metropolitan Police. I was photographing the picket line. I retaliated, punching him back. He fell to the ground and I ran, being chased by six of his colleagues. They had truncheons drawn, shouting, get him. I ran about half a mile and dived into a bush. I lay silent as they ran past. They were closely followed by some pickets who could see the police would beat me up. They would not allow that to happen. The cool board chairman, Mr Ian McGregor, has warned the miners that a long strike will only serve to speed up the bid closure programme. I remember an industrialist telling me, our job is to discover what the customer will buy as a producer. Just hold my hand. Police used to blockade the roads leading to the pits to stop flying pickets. I used to walk over the mountains during the early hours of the morning to reach some of the picket lines. In dark, wet and cold conditions, my hands were numb as I reached the picket line. Pressing the shutter release on my camera became an arduous task. I'm driving back to Mardi, 30 years on, to see how things have changed. Here we are, this is it. I'm overlooking the village of Mardi, and it's a March day, it's cold, it's misty, and it's raining. I can see the wind turbines in the distance on the hillside and I will also see the scars of the coal industry with the, the old coal tips and the, the scrambler bike tracks on them. And you can see the old colliery site of the last pit in the Rhonda Valley, which is now derelict and has been since they demolished it. Mardi Colliery closed in 1990. It was the last pit in the Rhonda Valley. The long tradition of coal mining had come to an end. The pit was demolished, and to this day, the land lies dormant. Much needed employment was lost at the top of the Rhonda Valley, and miners' sons would never follow their fathers and their grandfathers mining coal in the rich Rhonda scene. Mardi was known as Little Moscow because of its trade unionism and its strength to fight. And there weren't any pickets at Mardi Colliery throughout the year-long strike because not one miner would attempt to, to ever go back. They were that solid. So that's credit to them. And I think that builds this, this community. That's what this community is really all about. As we drop down now into the village, you can see the terraced houses and you can see where the, the Miners Institute used to be and it's, it's like scars that have just been left. On the right hand side here is when the Mardi Miners Institute used to be. And it's just waste ground now. It's quite sad. But the terraced houses are still here. Passing through the village now and see the shops, it's better to see the spa shop. But a lot of the shops now are boarded up and uh, there's a hairstylist there that's closed down. So I've just walked from the village and it's about a quarter of a mile up to the old colliery site. 
And I remember before the strike, I took photographs at this uh, pit, and you see the sign, it was blue and yellow, it was an NCB sign, and it said Mardi Colliery, South Wales area. And then you go into the car park. I remember it being a, a fairly modern looking colliery. Um, it was quite large, you know, there's quite a lot of buildings. And there was quite a lot of noise as well, and the, the steam coming out from the pit at bars and, and so on. And the, the, the wheel on the winding gear going, and you could hear the shunting of the coal wagons just down below. So it was really quite a noisy, a noisy place to be. Um, but it's totally changed now, it's totally silent. All you can hear now is the, is the wind and the birds singing. I remember in my photographs when the miners used to come up in the cage from this colliery, all the collieries, and they'd been working underground for eight hours, and they always smiled, they always laughed and smiled when they saw the camera, and uh, made some <laughs> quirky comments. It was always good fun to take photos of them. They were always really well humoured, and yeah, it was fantastic. It was a privilege for me to, to be able to do that. So this is where the canteen used to be. Here's the tiles. And I probably, I took some photographs in the canteen and the miners were, were laughing. Some were going on shift, some were coming off shift. And they were drinking their cups of tea. And this is probably where I took the picture on this particular spot here. Um, yes. That was over 30 years ago, but uh, it's, gone, it's gone so quick, but oh, it's awful sad to see, it really is sad to see. And I just photographed it, you know, to, to work here, especially for the young miners and lose their jobs. And it must have been soul destroying. But they were happy days, you know, happy, happy days, although the strike was, was incredibly difficult for miners and their families and indeed these communities. It, um, it was happy days, and they all tend to say that, you know, they all tend to look back with affection at the 1984-1985 miners' strike. Union miners stand together, do not heed the cold board's tales, keep your hands upon your wages and your eyes. The most poignant moment in my career was witnessing the Mardi miners march back to work as the strike came to an unsuccessful conclusion. On a cold March morning in 1985, the miners and their families gathered to march from the village of Mardi to the pit. They held banners high whilst the brass band played. The press photographers and media scurried around trying to get the best pictures, but I was tearful as I recorded a moment in industrial history I shall never forget. In my opinion, the miners won. They held their heads up high and left a legacy to fight in what they believed in. It was an honour to meet all the miners and their families and a privilege to photograph them.